Imagine how it would be for you if you got a virtual site pair alongside you while you're coding. The site pair is helping you to automatically generate code and improve your code by making it faster and more efficient. You can chat with him, you can ask questions, ask suggestions and much much more. Sounds good right? Well GitHub Copilot is that AI site pair of yours that makes it all possible. It is an AI coding assistant that helps you to write code faster and with less efforts, allowing you to focus more energy on problem solving and collaboration. GitHub Copilot is proven to provide 55% faster coding and also proven to increase developers productivity and accelerate the pace of software development. If we take a look at the industry standards, then we can see that around 50,000 plus businesses have adopted GitHub Copilot. One in three Fortune 500 companies use GitHub Copilot and 55% of developers preference GitHub Copilot. Now if you want to learn more about this and you want to know how to use this amazing AI tool then you just clicked on the right video. In this GitHub Copilot tutorial you will learn how to use GitHub Copilot and how it can be your trusty navigator guiding you on your flight path to a coding career that really takes off and goes up high. So with vibrant excitement and a passionate spirit, Edureka welcomes you all to our YouTube channel and this time let's explore the capabilities of the GitHub Copilot with this video on GitHub Copilot tutorial. But before we begin, kindly consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest tech content from Edureka. Also visit the Edureka website for GitHub Copilot training course, the link to which is in the description box below. So now, let's open up our code editors and get started with the GitHub Copilot. Now, very firstly, let's check how you can install the GitHub Copilot into your system. So very firstly, we have opened our Visual Studio code and in order to install the GitHub Copilot, go to the extensions and as an extension, type GitHub Copilot. You can see over here. Now, I have already installed GitHub Copilot in my system. But over here, you can just click on the install button and we'll start installing in your system. After that, once you have installed GitHub Copilot, you have to create an account in the GitHub. So over here, you can see the GitHub link. Click on that and it will redirect it to a page of GitHub. Now I've already installed GitHub. Now one more thing comes is that this GitHub Copilot needs a paid subscription. So if you want to check the paid subscription for the GitHub Copilot, we can visit this particular website. I'll be putting the website in the description. You can check it out from there. Now. Once you come to this website, which is the GitHub Copilot official website, you can scroll down and over here, you can check the subscription plan for GitHub Copilot. For the $10, you can start a free trial over here. Then according to your usage, you can check whichever plan you want. So once we have installed GitHub Copilot and we have subscribed to the GitHub Copilot, it's time for us to use the GitHub Copilot for our coding. So once we are done with the installation part of GitHub Copilot, you can check this icon over here of GitHub Copilot. This icon basically portrays that your GitHub Copilot is active and it's ready to run. And in case if you don't see this icon, just restart your Visual Studio code. And once you restart, you're going to see this icon over here. Now I have already created a folder of GitHub Copilot in which we are going to store our files in which we are going to check the capabilities of GitHub Copilot. So before we jump into the coding part, let me show you something interesting. So, for example, let me create a Python file. So I'll put edureka.python. Now, if I put a comment over here, comment, and if I put a question like, what is inheritance in Python? So, as you can see that it is already predicting my question. I'll put enter, and it's gonna generate an answer for me. You can see the answer over here. If I wanna accept that answer, I have to just click on tab button and for the convenience I'll put alt plus z and over here you can check the answer for this particular question. Inheritance is a mechanism in which one class acquires the property of another class and has also given us an example. Now if I check another question, so see over here it's also predicting my next question. It's already asking an example of inheritance in python. So if I accept that, I put enter and it gave me the example of inheritance. It also gave me a piece of code. So for now, I won't get into the coding part. So this is how you can check that GitHub Copilot is also good in predicting our next questions and predicting our next moves. So this is how you can also put a Q&A with GitHub Copilot. 
So now let's move to the coding part. Let me make a index.html file. I'm gonna put the tags over here. Then I'm gonna put the title as let's say Edureka. And in the body, let's say if I make a container. Now over here you can also see the H1 and para that GitHub Copilot is suggesting us for the title Edureka. So the text which is appearing over here is called as a ghost text. Now if I want to accept this ghost text, I have to click on the tab. And if you just want to reject, just click on escape button. So for this, it has already given an H1 and a para for this. I'm going to put all plus Z to put it in a better format. Now let's add a style sheet into that. So if I put style.css and in style.css, I want H1 tag as let's say blue in color. Now I have to link the style sheet into our HTML file. So for that, it's already giving a code for us. So if I click on tab button, it's going to link the style sheet. And then if we run this whole file, you can see it has applied the style sheet. It has given the heading in blue color. Welcome to Eureka and also given us the text. So here you can see how GitHub Copilot is helping us with HTML and CSS. Now let's check some other capabilities and features of GitHub Copilot. So after playing with the HTML and CSS using GitHub Copilot, let's check some more interesting features in GitHub Copilot. So again, we'll go to the .py file, which we created in the initial stages of our tutorial. And you can see this option of control plus I. Now, if you press control plus I, it's going to open an option of inline chat feature in GitHub Copilot. So let's say we give it a prompt of generate a code for calculating the number of days between two dates. Let's keep it simple. Once you press enter, it will start generating the code snippet for you. Now, if you are satisfied with the code snippet, just click on accept. I can see the code snippet is appearing in your code editor. Now, let's say there is some error in this particular code. So let's say if I remove this end date from here and I don't know what is the error in this particular piece of code, how to find it. Now, in order to find this, GitHub Copilot helps you with this particular feature of fix this. Now, if I select the whole code, right click, I'll go to Copilot. And if I click on the fix this option, it's going to fix the whole code by giving you the suggestion and giving you the solution for this particular problem that you're facing. So it already says that your problem is with the function is expecting one argument, but two are provided. So if I accept this, you can see again, it put it the last argument over here, which is of end date. Now, GitHub Copilot sometimes gives the accurate code snippet which you want, and sometimes it might differ from what you actually want. Now, in order to do that, just select the whole code and put control plus enter. Now, once you press control plus enter, you can see GitHub Copilot coming up with a lot of suggestions for this particular piece of code. Now, if you're satisfied with any of the suggestion, you can just accept the suggestions and it's going to implement the particular suggestion for your code. Now, let's check one more feature. Now, you can even ask GitHub Copilot to explain the whole code separately. Now, in order to do that, again, go to the Copilot and go to this option of explain this. Now, once you click on the explain this option, now you can see in the chat box, it comes up with a whole explanation of this particular code. Now, this chat box is very much similar to the other AI chatbots that you use like ChatGPT or Google Gemini or Google Bot. Now, you can even ask for more questions to this chat box. So let's say if I ask him, write a code for bubble sort algorithm, let's see. So here you can see that is coming up with a code snippet of bubble sort algorithm. Now this is very much similar to what we do in chat GPT or other AI bots like Google Gemini and all. But the main feature is that this chatbot is appearing in your code editor and you can just directly copy paste this particular piece of code. You don't need to go to the separate browser. Then you have to copy paste the whole code from there. So in short, it makes your job more easy. Now to make it visually more appealing, you can even drag this chat box anywhere in the code editor. For example, if I put it over here, 
So you can see the chat box appearing over here or you can make it appear anywhere in the code editor according to your convenience. Now, after checking these basic features, let's check how these features of GitHub Copilot actually help us while you build something. So for now, let's try to make a simple chatbot using Python with OpenAI API and let's see how quickly we can complete building this chatbot. So very firstly, we're gonna start by importing OpenAI library. Now, to install this OpenAI, you have to go to your terminal and type pip install OpenAI. So, after that, let's put our API key. And now you can see that GitHub Copilot is already ready with its suggestions in the form of a ghost text. So, we're gonna type tab and let me change my API key. Now, in case if you don't know how to generate the OpenAI keys, then you can just simply visit the OpenAI website and over here, in the platforms you can generate your API key. I'll be putting this link in the description. You can go to this website and make your API keys. So I'm gonna copy my API key and then I'm gonna paste it over here. Then let's make a function of def chat with GPT. And you can see once we write the function, it's already ready with the code. And in this case, we exactly want the same code. Response equal open .ai completion create engine is gpt 3.5 instruct exactly prompt is from max tokens is 150 decent enough now what is this code about what is this function about let's understand now this function will generate text based on the input prompt using opening eyes language module the parameters for the completion model include the engine prompt and the max token this engine basically specifies which version of the language model to use in this case it's using the GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct Engine and then it comes to the prompt. Now this prompt is a text provided to the model to generate a response. It's what the user wants to chat about or to get information on. Then we have the max token. Now this parameter limits the number of tokens in the generated response. Here it is set to 150. It means that response won't be too long. Now once the response is received from the OpenAI API, the function returns the generated text. The dot choice dot text strip part extracts the generated text from the response object and removes any extra white spaces from beginning and the end. Now let's move forward and create the main function. So we are going to put f name dot main and you can see again it came with the host text which is exactly I want. Now what is this main function? Let me explain you. Now over here the code first check if it's being run directly. Then it enters a loop where it continuously prompts the user for input. If the user inputs an exit command, the loop breaks. Otherwise, it prints the user input and the bot responses. So now let's go and run our chatbot. We're gonna run it in the terminal. So over here, I'm gonna ask who are you? So over here, you can see the generated response. It's like I'm opening a SGPT3 language model program to assist you with a variety of this. Okay, great. So you can see that our chatbot is working. Let's say one more question of like, what is the difference between a class and an object? Let's say. Again, it came with a answer. A class is a template or blueprint that defines the characteristics and behaviors of a type object. But an object is an instance of class. So it typically answers the question which you want. Now, you already witnessed that how easily we build this chatbot with just a few clicks by accepting the recommendations from the GitHub Copilot. Now, after the chatbot, let's also try to make a linear regression model for us. So we'll start off by importing our required libraries. So firstly, I'm gonna start by import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Then I'm gonna import numpy, it is already showing me over here. I'm gonna click on tab. Then I don't need torch, but from scikit-learn, I need to import the data sets and the linear model. And then from scikit-learn, I need mean squared error. Yes, I do need mean squared error, so I'm gonna accept that. And then I will start by loading the diabetes data sets, which it's already showing me over here. So I'm gonna tab, and then it's gonna give me a code. So again, I'm gonna click on tab. So again, I'm gonna click on tab. Now, what I want is, yeah, this is exactly what I want. 
I just wanted to use only one feature of it. So again, I'm going to click on tab, enter. It's going to give me a code for that. That's already did it slicing. And then I'm going to print it. So print diabetes X. And let's check the data set. This is the exact data set which we wanted. Or this one feature we are taking to train our model. So I'm going to lead that. I'm going to move forward by building a model. So after that, we have to split the data into training and test. It already knows what we are planning to do. Put enter. Yes. So over here, it is taking the first 80 elements for the training data set. So I was like, so I'm okay with that. And then for testing, it's taking the last 20. I'm even okay with that. Then for target, I need training and testing. Yes. Again, I'm going to split the target into training and testing. So diabetes by train, diabetes by test, exactly what I want. And then I'm finally going to create the linear regression object or the model. So as you can see, I'm just writing the comments and it is already showing me the code for that. So for this particular model, I don't even have to code a single line or rarely maybe a line or two I have to code. But everything GitHub Copilot is suggesting me. So I'm going to click on tab. Then I have to train my model exactly what I wanted to do. Enter. So it's going to fit diabetes X train, diabetes Y train. Enter. And after that, I'm going to make some predictions again exactly. Enter. So diabetes Y predict. Good. I'm going to predict the X testing set. So this is exactly what I want. And then I also want the coefficients. It's giving me the code to print the coefficients. And then again the mean squared error I want. It's giving the code for mean squared error. Tab enter, tab enter. And then I'm gonna give the plot outputs. For that we need the plt.scatter exactly. And then plt.plot for that one straight line. And then I want plot to show plt.show. So a linear regression model is ready and as you can see how much coding I did it by myself or manually. GitHub Copilot made the job as easy as it can be. So I'm gonna run the python file in the terminal. So you saw how conveniently and quickly we made these projects using GitHub Copilot. However, these were just the basic projects we built in order to give you an idea about GitHub Copilot. And now, if you want to level up your GitHub Copilot game, then you can enroll in our GitHub Copilot training course, the link to which will be in the description box below. With this, we come to the end of this video. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, kindly consider liking this video and also subscribing to GitHub channel. So, till we meet next time, happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!